In this video, we're going to talk about the principle of balance. Balance is a way of combining elements to add a feeling of equilibrium or stability to a work of art. In other words, taking different objects or different shapes, different colors, and balancing them together so that they either are divided in half, divided in a circle, or they're not really divided, they're sort of unbalanced. So the first type of balance we're going to talk about is formal balance, or what we call symmetrical as well. A design that is the same on both sides of imaginary line or its mirror image is what we're talking about when we talk about formal balance. In this simple example, uh, you have the exact same circles appearing on either side of that center line. If an object is different on either side of that center line, we create what we call informal balance or asymmetrical balance. It's a design that has different objects on either side of that center line that seem to have the same visual weight. An easy way to remember informal balance is that it looks like it doesn't have balance. So in this example, I have circles on one side, I have squares on the other. So they're unbalanced to each other. We have to also look at the fact of this is actually still balanced because in this example, the windmill that's on the left side is balanced by the fact that there isn't a windmill on the right side. So the positive space of the windmill on the left is balanced out by the absence or negative space on the right side. Uh, so it really still does have balance, but an easy way to remember is it looks like it's unbalanced. The last type of balance is radial balance, and this is closely related to formal balance. In that formal balance being mirror image, I'm actually formally balancing something in multiple directions, and that ends up making it look like it's arranged around the center point. So in this example, you can see that each of the smaller circles around the edges seem to be arranged around the center of this big circle in the center. If I divide that design up in four directions, vertical, horizontal, and on both diagonals, it ends up being formal along either one of those or any of those red lines. For my intents and purposes, a radial design has to include both of those things to be considered radial.